إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فهو المهتدي وما يضلل فلا هادي له وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كثين فيه أبدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فالله سبحانه وتعالى يقول وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه وراجعون ويا ويقول أيضا محمدنا رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وعنه عليه الصلاة والسلام من سن في الإسلام سنة حسنة فله عجرها وأجر من عمل بها إلى آخر الحديث وقال أيضا عليه الصلاة والسلام الدين النصيحة إلى آخر الحديث أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد حييكم بتحية الإسلام تحية مباركة وهي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome again to another topic which is dealing with misconceptions about Islam. And inshallah, pray, pray for me. Uh, I'm writing my second book about Islam. Alhamdulillah, I wrote the first one uh, which was about the satanic verses or Hadith al-Gharaniq which is tra translated as Kirens, but later orientalists like Gulam, Alfred Gulam, they, 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 they gave this story as the sa satanic verses. Inshallah, pray that these two, two books of mine and other books which I, I shall write, pray for me, I, I, I get cheap pub publishers, I also get the funds, to publish these books, you can also contribute uh, your zakah. You, you can bring it since, since zakah can be g given to to those who are who are doing da'wah according to the Holy Quran. In Insha'Allah khair, I shall also leave my contacts if you're interested in helping me to publish the, this to these two books which are first books of mine it's okay you will be doing a uh, khair it, it, it will be as, as if you have written these two books according to this hadith of, of, of which I, I have just mentioned okay so let, let us get to the topic without uh, wasting time so today our topic of which we we want to get into it quickly will will be what i mentioned yesterday if i'm not wrong when i when i produced a video dealing with does islam regard men and women equal so today we shall be dealing with the pact of Umar, what Umar had, the, the treaty or agreement Umar had with the Christians. So according to the d d d debate of Sam Shamoun, of whom he is known to attack Islam, he bases his views on weaker hadith, on a hadith of, of which he, he doesn't understand, 
he doesn't even go to what the scholars have said. He just uh, reads their, their, their hadith without going to the scholars, without even uh, uh, reading anything about Islam in context. This, this, this is known, and this sunnah of his is also followed by David Wood. You know that. So these two, Sam Shamoun and David Wood, are among the strongest enemies of Islam. I can say it. And inshallah we shall just respond to to any anything which which they bring up, inshallah. In the coming videos I shall put links under under my vid videos so that you can go to those links since I have uh, some of my brothers which have started this work be, 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 be for me and uh, they have wiped all the misconceptions of Christian Prince of, of whom uh, in, inshallah I shall get to, to him for the second time of, 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 of whom he ran away when I was uh, de debating with him you know Christian Prince is somebody of whom he just wants to play around with with you he doesn't know anything about the Bible. He himself ad admits that in his video chat with Sam Shashamon. Just type. Okay, I don't notice the title of the video, but you just get it. Just, just type Christian Prince and Sam Shamon and you'll find it there. He tells uh, Sam Shamon, you, you know, eh? you know, about the the bi bi Bible. I don't know ab about the Bible. Okay, you don't know about the Bible? But you, but you know about Islam. Surprising, as a good comparative scholar, since you claim to know Islam, you should study both sides. And the other one responded back, Sam Shamun, telling him, Christian Prince, you know Arabic, you will help us out. So Sam Shamun doesn't even understand our text. He's just reading the translation. He should read the Arabic text to understand. And I shall show in inshallah he doesn't know Arabic when I'm explaining does Islam allow rape? In inshallah, I shall uh, uh, read this from the web website by by our brother Baba Sam Z Zawadi. Yeah, because some you know don't have time. Most of us, not even some, they don't have time to go to the website to to search about Islam. But on YouTube, that you YouTube you know doesn't have problems it's a it's a it's a fact most of the muslims will, will go to youtube yeah so if you come to my video you will you you will benefit i, I can say, say that and what you 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 hear may, may, may strengthen your iman and it will also strengthen my iman by providing you with knowledge so let us know what about about the pact of omar since some shaman you know mentioned it when he was uh de debating nadir ahmed you should go to, to that de debate just type on youtube sam shamun and nadir ahmed and you you will find what he here here he said about omar okay so it is said uh omar had you know at a treaty with the christians he also told them not to read the Quran, among other things. He, he stayed with them peacefully. And this shows how the Christian, let me put it this way, how the Christian Arabs have su 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 survived during the Prophet's time and before the Prophet's time and during the Khulafa's time, the successors of the Prophet. They, they've been su 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 surviving peacefully with the Muslims. No, not only the Christians, the Jews also. They also ad admit it. The Arabs also ad 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 admit it. They are very eh, safe under the, the Muslim rule than, than the Christian rule over them. So, almost, almost, uh, all, almost all of the narratives of these conditions which Omar had with the Christians came with the same text that, that stated on part one with much unnoticed tiny differences. In this part of the article, uh, I am reading from an article which, which was published. Let me 
tell you that it, it, it is good to know that you can also print this article which you will find on Google a very nice art article and very educative I, I can say, say say that it is an art article by Dr. Tariq Ladjal who is a professor of history at Effort University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia okay don't forget Dr. Tariq Ladjal Dr. Tariq Ladjal L-A-D-J-A-L L-A-D-J-A-L Dr. Tariq Ladjal Professor of History at Ifat University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia Just type the, this name and a, and a small hyphen then write Pact of Omar Pact, P-A-C-T P-A-C-T and you can also print it, put it in mosques. You can give, give, give to any organization to put it in, in their magazine. You can also have your own personal copy. So these narratives, almost, almost uh, all of these narratives of these conditions came with the same text that state, stated on part one with much and uh, unnoticed tiny differences when well, he's, he's referring to another article so in this part as the professor says in this part of the article i will discuss the conditions positions in islamic heritage and uh, and uh, mention some of its contradictions with the well-known tradition of islam so these conditions which were packed of sayyidina umar with the christians of uh, Syria, if I'm not wrong, it, it is with the Christians of Syria, but just confirm that, and I, and I shall confirm. These conditions have penetrated into our religious jurisprudence and political heritage and have clearly influenced the approval of many jurisprudential views of many scholars. Many books have been written describing these claimed conditions without paying attention that these con conditions are falsified and, contra and, and contrary to the purposes of Islam and the biography of the Prophet and the following Muslim caliphs. These conditions just go, you know, against what, what Islam has taught, against the spirit of Islam, against what is known of the Sharia of Islam with the people of the book. Okay, these conditions and doctrinal rulings have been used and are still being used by many extremist groups as a justification for their persecution of non-Muslim mi minorities in Muslim countries. What ISIS is doing against the Christians of Iraq, Syria and Egypt is the best ev ev evidence of the misuse of these conditions to bring about instability in the Muslim world. And... Uh, yeah, this is what is being uh, used. There's a misunderstanding. Also, the hadith, I can say it's a weaker hadith, and inshallah I shall show. And with other hadiths, so all this is uh, used by ISIS, which is a which uh, is one of the many extremist groups so that it can persecute non-Muslim minor minorities in Syria, Egypt and Iraq. And all this has nothing to do with, the, with Islam. I mean there are evidences. Even ulama, al ulama of Al-Azhar I have published very nice articles. Just go to Dara Lifta, type on YouTube Dara Lifta, and you shall see the web website of which it has uh, articles and books from Ulama Al Azhar. Just go to the article section. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, to the article section. But just type. I've not been there for a long, long time, so I'm not so sure. Just. Uh, just to go to the you know to the links there and you will find a magazine Dara Lifta magazine well that magazine has explained all those ev ev evidences which are misused by uh, ISIS 
so that they can persecute the non-Muslims. Alhamdulillah, very nice, uh, nice articles. If you master them, ah, no any Islamic, no any non-Muslim apologist who hates Islam or any extremist will be able to misuse any ev evidence from a hadith or Quran in front of your face. And inshallah, uh, I, sh I shall start that program basing my views on on these magazines which are published by ulama al-azhar to explain to the public how evidences uh, are misused inshallah so follow up like share and subscribe and send to people my videos so so, so, so that they can bene benefit yeah the christians have to be shown how evidences are misused so that to persecute them just let, let me ask if the Prophet ﷺ used to persecute the, Christ, the Christians, how come there are some Swah 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 Swahabas who are Christians like Adi bin Hatim who became Muslims? What sword was put on their neck? The Jewish Rabbi Abdullah ibn Salam, what sword was put on his neck? Both of them became Muslims through knowledge, through the character of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. So just as you, you, you know, just, you know, some extremist person will mis misuse evidences. Now the whole of Islam is, uh, is persecuted, is, is doomed as a terrorist religion. If we have the, that ideology, we, we, we will also point to India. I, India, the... Uh, the idol worshippers, what are they doing to the Muslims? What about, about in Burma? We will also base our views that, that the religion of most people in Burma, which is Buddhism and Hinduism of, of India. Okay, these two religions I've just mentioned, they teach terrorism. They are terrorist religions. Yeah, they are, they are ter terrorist religions. Let, let me put it that way. If I'm basing my mentality, mentality that, that way, not going to the scriptures to, 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 to see does this, does this religion, Hinduism or Buddhism, teach terrorism? Yeah, we can also do that. You know, all this comes with lack of knowledge and just hate. Islam is a re 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 religion of terrorism, as the non-Muslims say. Just go to their we website answering Islam. They will pub publish articles showing that is Islam is a terrorist religion. And the one who is not knowledgeable among the Christian and Muslim will fall prey to, the, to that uh, uh, agenda. Wallahi, if you study the Quran well, huh? And the purpose of the revelation of those verses of the Holy Quran which show uh, why the pro Prophet fought the non-believers to, together with the Sunnah, their, their Hadith, to read them in context. And, uh, and why the Prophet fought Wallahi, Thumma, Billahi, Thumma, Tallahi. You will know Islam is the only religion on the earth which teaches somebody how to how to fight in protecting oneself and the religion and the weak in community not fighting for any other motives surprisingly how why did the prophet ali salatu wasalam had to wait for, for for some time until the revelation came to him so that he can pur, uh, protect himself how come he just didn't uh, just didn't start, you know, fighting. Very quickly, I can say. Even at the conquest of Makkah, huh? why did he, didn't he take, you, you know, his, his uh, re, uh, re revenge? I think that, that was the best time. Leave, leave alone uh, re revenge. I think that was the best time huh? of him forcing every, every person because the Muslims were 10,000 that overpowered the they broke their idols 
to clean Allah's house. That was the best time they were the only prophet now to force everybody to enter Islam. What about the Jews who are, who are in Medina? How come there is no text which shows that the only prophet put a sword as big as my hand on their necks to become Muslims? Or show me any evidence the prophet put a sword on a Christian's neck to force him into, into Islam. Come on, we should not take, we should not take you know, examples from extremist guru groups. This is even told by Henry O'Leary, the French eh, his historian. It shows Islam spreading by a sword is a myth. And uh, people tend to take what sub extremist people are doing. Henry O'Leary studied Islam and knew that what the prophet taught about spreading Islam is peace, not spreading Islam by a sword. He knew that there are only few people who are doing, you know, some, some extremism. And that is not to be blamed on the religion of Islam being spread by the sword. Anan Muslim who studied Islam nicely, like the way a Muslim scholar is supposed to uh, is supposed to study Islam, and he's come out with these views. So the board is on your side to do your research on on Islam. So the conditions of Omar's so the conditions of Omar, which conflict with the Pact of Omar by many old and modern Muslim scholars as well as by Western or Orientalists, many of them did not di distinguish between them. Many scholars dealt with the conditions as valid without any criticism, without any criticism or comparison with the Quran and biography of the Prophet. The conflicting, or, or the conflicting opinions of scholars on when these conditions were first revealed is evidence of the weakness of this conditions the historical investigation proves that the first to mention these conditions of uh, omar which go against the spirit of islam in short so the first so the the first uh, the first scholar or, or historian to, to to explain this pact was Abu Bakr al-Khalal, who died in the year 311 after Hijra in his book, The Provisions of the People of the Book, and who, and who was from the second stage of Hanbali scholars. They were later mentioned by Ibn al-Arabi, these conditions who died in 340 after Hijra, and were mentioned by Ibn Hazm, who, who died in the year 456 after Hijra and by Bayhaqi who died 458 after Hijra and Ibn Asakir who died in 571 after Hijra. So it shows the trend of mentioning this pact of, of, of when it started which was and it started during and it was started by a scholar who was named Abu Bakr al-Khalal, he was the first to mention this and he was followed by who, by who, by who okay so these conditions of Omar have been repeated frequently in the books of Islamic heritage without critic or comparison with the philosophy of, of Islam and the guidance of Prophet Muhammad and even the policy of Omar ibn al-Khattab in dealing with Christians one of the Prophet's last commandments was I recommend my successor to be good to the people of God and his messenger and to protect them and to defend them to death. I recommend him not to, to make them bear what they cannot bear. It is strange that one of our Muslim scholars, Ibn al-Qayyim, singled out six chapters to explain the conditions of Omar in his book, The Rulings of the People of the Book without criticizing them or comparing them with the known stories of the Muslim Khalifs with regard to dealing with the people of the book. What is more astonishing is the explanation of Ibn al-Qayyim's book published by Professor Subhi al-Salih who approved them without questioning them. The most astonishing of all is that Christian historian, George's 
Zidane. Hey, the most astonishing fact is that this Christian historian, George Zidane, touched on these conditions and apologized to Omar. Underline that word after publishing the, the, this article. Underline the, this word. These words. Apologies, apologized to Omar ibn al-Khattab. Yeah. Underline from apologized until to ibn al-Khattab. So this Christian apologized to Omar ibn al-Khattab and raised the, the issue of their contradictions with the spirit of the time of Omar and the tolerant biography of Omar, which many of our Muslim scholars did not notice. Yeah, Omar bin al-Khattab was the leader. You want to tell me during the time of Omar bin al-Khattab, there were no people who are enter, entering Islam. Or if Omar uh, was that huh, was that strict, would uh, people huh, have uh, have been with peace with the Muslims? Just let me tell you the Quran teaches the people of the of the book to heed to, to, to the words of the Holy Quran and there are many examples in Surah Al-Maida in Surah Al-Bayna Lam yakunil ladhina kafaru min ahli al-kitab wal mushrikina munfakina hatta ta'tiyahum al-bayna rasulun min Allah yatlu ya yatlu yatlu alayhim suhufan mutahhara if i'm not wrong but Surah Al-Bayna just read it and you will know that the, the people of the book and the mush and the mushari kings they wanted an ev evidence of a prophet reading for them you you know uh i can say suhufan mutahara yani a book which a book which is uh, clean free from discrepancies verses not contradicting one another and which is that book not from the holy if it is not the Holy Quran, read the commentary of this surah, Surah al -Bayna. And there are many, many. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْ إِلَى كَلِمَةٍ سَوَا إِنْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَنِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ Until the end of the ayah. This is found in chapter 3 of the Holy Quran. Open any translation if you are Muslim or a Christian and search for these verses. For a Christian, go, go to the Muslim who understands Arabic to guide you. Chapter 3 of the Holy Quran. Quran and there are many examples. Eh? Allah tells the people of the book, OP, OP, people of the book, this, 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 with the conclusion to heed the words of the Holy Quran. Showing them that the Holy Quran confirmed what was in their books before their books were corrupted. So now in this pact, Omar is telling them not to have anything to do with the Holy Quran and it it is known in this in Islam this is known there is no any disagreement except from somebody who is ignorant about Islam anything which goes against the Holy Quran we we take it away yeah the Holy Quran is, is telling them to believe in the Holy Quran and Omar is 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 telling them not to huh? not to to touch the Holy Quran. In fact, if Omar said that, where were the other Sahabis? Yeah, if, if a Sahabi does, does wrong one Sahaba, the other Sahabas, hmm? the other Sahabas took correct him. How come there were no any other Sahaba who was to correct him? Hey, Omar, what you have said, it is uh, wrong. The Quran commands us, the Prophet commands us huh? to Eh? To to give da da dawa, eh? or to eh? or to preach to to the people of the of the book, the Jews and the Christians, to believe in the Holy Quran. The Prophet himself, the, the, there's a hadith of which he says eh? about the people of the book. The hadith says, says shows that the people of the book have to believe in him, and if they believe in him, they have to heed to the Holy Quran. 
This is a hadith which is found even in the translation of the Holy Quran, which is uh, called the Noble Quran, which was, uh, you know, certified by the late scholar Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah bin Baz. Yeah, you will find all this information in the Noble Quran. You can purchase it in Muslim book bookshops and just go through it. You'll find this hadith there. So, the ball is is on your side. To us, it is just to de to deliver the message. Wama alina illa al-balag. Wama alina illa al-balagul mu bin. To us, it is just in summary. To us, it is just to deliver the message. And then Allah is the one who is to provide now the light of understanding, which is called in Arabic tawfiq. Okay, so higher after Henry O'Leary, eh, we have another one, George's Z, Z, George's Zidane, of whom he saw these conditions and so uh, this is this is not be, befitting to Omar, and he apologized to Omar ibn al Khattab and raised the issue of their contradictions with the spirit of the time of Omar and the tol tolerant biography of Omar, which many of our Muslim scholars did, did not notice. There's also a key eh, of which it o opens the so-called tomb of Jesus where, where he was raised in, Jer in Jer Jerusalem. This key eh, was given to a Muslim family and that family's generation ha ha has gone up to now. The children of that family have the keys of the tomb. Why? Because there's the Jews and the Christians had conflict on the on the tomb of Jesus, so you know the Muslims were given this key for the tomb of Jesus. Omar was that tolerant, tolerant with the Christians. He didn't want them to fight, and the key of that tomb was entrusted to the Muslim. See how. Omar wanted the peace between the Christians and the Jews. The well-known fact. Come here and put these conditions and then blame Islam on it. It's a problem. Just reading anything and just uh, reading it to the people as a part of Islam. Islam doesn't do that. Islam separates, you know, like the way rice is done. Eh? You know, is spread up, you know, so, so, so that, you know, st stones in it can be taken out and any other that. That is the way. In Islam, our good scholars and the respected scholars check, you know, those that, those weak na narrations, those narrations which do not make sense. So they, they, they know how to save. Until that narration conforms with the spirit of Islam or with the Holy Quran. Yeah, it conforms with the spirit of Islam and the Holy Quran. We can't just read anything to the people. And, the, and this is known with the Christian apologists like Sam Shamoun and David Wood. Christian prince, there are many just reading anything without knowing its authenticity. And telling the people with the aim to leave the religion of Islam. But people nowadays are studying. They know how to see narrations which go against the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah, Sam Shamoun and David Wood have been responded by many people. Radu Shubuhat of Akil Onk, Yahya Snow. Many people have responded to, to them. As I have just mentioned some minutes ago, all their lies upon Islam have been wiped out. Just uh, sub subscribe to, to the channels of Yahya Snow and Aradu Shushubuat and see for yourselves. And Darkness to Noor. There are many channels which have responded back and cleared all the misconceptions of these two fellows, Sir Sam Shamun and David Wood. And I, Alhamdulillah, I am one of them, although I am still young in knowledge. But Alhamdulillah, people have done greater things than me by wiping out the misconceptions. Let us get back. In an unusual manner, Imam, okay, 
the conditions sorry i've talked a lot of that i've forgotten where i have uh, uh, reached okay the conditions which are the pact of omar reflect the mentality of the reflect the mentality of the victorious and cultivate the seeds of social and moral isolation of the christian mi minority in the muslim community and re reflect the extreme and strange insult of christians and contradict completely with the spirit of the holy quran and the biography of the prophet and the biography of the writers caliphs who frequently urged for the mercy and the dig dignity of the people of the book that there's a hadith which has also been been men mentioned in the book al halal wal haram the lawful and the unlawful by our scholar our revered scholar one of our good scholars yusuf al al -Qar Qar -Qar he mentions the hadith of which the holy prophet says if you don't do good to the people of the book even the fragrance of the eh, of heaven you will not smell it the holy prophet ali salatu wasalam is our example after him we have we have to see because after him pe people make mistakes and 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 get eh, like imam malik has has taught us malik ibn anas one of our great scholars imam dar al hijra eh, the the imam of the era of the hijra he mentions eh, everybody eh, gets and commits mistakes except eh, the uh, the owner of this grave except uh, the person of this grave who is the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasallam is the only one is the masum he doesn't commit any mistake in sharia but the ones after him eh, usually commit for for example in the preservation of the of the holy quran into into a book eh, omar talked to abu Abba. Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr was was mistaken. Okay, how can I do this? And the Prophet, you know, didn't, didn't do, do, do it until later. He came, you know, to to know that okay, let it be preserved in the book for for later generations, so, so that the Quran will not be lost. And Zaid bin uh, Zaid bin uh, Thabit was was called, and all this we shall explain later when when we are explaining the preservation of the Holy Quran. So 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 it shows like this had hadith of of Abu, Abu Bakr that the so so habas can make you know mistakes for a, for example Abu Bakr was told that can a grandmother inherit he was asked him said na Abu Bakr if a grand if a grandmother can I inherit he said no he did a mistake but after consulting the other so habas he came to know he rectified his mistake so for the sake of argument let us throw in the towel omar told them not to, to read the holy quran and uh, and he, he he had you know some harsh uh, con conditions on them let us just, just, just say for the sake of argument how do we know omar later didn't rectify himself was that the view that was taught by the prophet was that the view of the remaining sahabas and there are many other examples for example ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu an, 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 eh? he didn't you know see surah al-falaq and surah al-nas the mu'adhatain they, they are called in arabic to be part of the holy quran but scholars tell us Later, he rectified himself. Some have said that this uh, lies upon Ibn Mas'ud. Well, scholars tell us, like Ibn Hajar al Askalani in Fath al Bari, scholars, scholars tell us that this, that, that this view eh, was, was not in accordance with the majority of the Sahabas. And it is known the majority of the Sahabas, if they say something, it is right. We have also clear text showing, like the Hadith of Ubay bin Kab, showing that these two Surahs were part of the Holy Quran, and these Surahs were being recited. 
these two surahs were, 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 were being re, uh, re, uh, recited in the salah. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud, it is also said, rectified himself. Uh, he himself says, uh, if there's any anybody you know to teach me uh, anything about the Holy Quran, I am ready to go to him. As, as it is found in Tafsir ibn Kathir. Anything about, about, about the Holy Quran, it's, uh, yeah, if he's there to teach me anything about the Holy Quran, yeah, I am ready to go to him. And there are many other other ex examples of of which I can bring to, to show that the Sahabas go, got a mistake in doing something, but later they rectified themselves. So, okay, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, according to some na narrations, he rectified himself. And he put uh, the Mu'adhatin to be as part of the Holy Quran. Inshallah, I shall make a topic to explain this uh, story of Abd Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. The, the Sahabas, in, in, in short, if they did a mistake, uh, they would later ask the, uh, the other Sahabas or the Holy Prophet, and their mistakes would, would be rectified. Like the Sahabas would read what they have written of the Holy Quran to the Prophet, as it is mentioned by scholars like Sayyid Abu Al Maududi. So that uh, you know they confirm what what they have written, it is right or wrong. The Sahabas were not infallible like, like the Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. And let me tell you, it's a known fact. You will also find it in Adura Rasunia, Fiya Jujubat and Najdi, among other books. This statement of Imam Malik. It is also mentioned in other books that everyone gets and does mistakes except the Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. This has been mentioned twice or thrice by Imam Malik. Find the book Adora Rasunia Fi Ajwibat in Najdiya and you'll find the statement of Imam Malik. Yeah, people after the Prophet, they, they commit mistakes. Not only the Sahabas, we have, we, have, we have also scholars who committed mistakes. Even these four Madhahib scholars, Hanafi, Shafi'i, Hanbali, and Maliki, these four scholars, they, they, they also did mistakes. It, it, it is called as Zafu. They are human beings. They are, they are not prophets. So let us con continue. Okay, if, uh, if Omar did, did this mistake, how do we know? That, that, that uh, later he rectified himself. He was told by other Sahabas what you are you're doing is not right. Okay, if Omar was that uh, bad, how would, okay, how would uh, uh, we, we find that nowadays Arabs are becoming Muslims? Be, 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 because they could have gotten from their four forefathers who go up to Omar's time. You know that new news could have spread. Omar was this, this, this. He was not doing well to us. How comes the Christians are, are, are still in those areas where Omar con conquered? If it was unfair to them, could they still remain there? Like I m m mentioned in yesterday's video, when I was explaining about does Islam re, uh, regard men, men and wo wo women as equal, just search on YouTube. If you're an, uh, if you know how to write Arabic, just type eh, what the Coptic priests, eh, uh, Qasais, Mada Yaquluna al Qasais al Misriin and Sayyidina Umar. And you will. Uh, you will find what they say.
what they say sorry about the Muslims. It was due during the time of Sayyid Sayyidina Omar. So you will see what they say about the Muslims, what the Muslims did, what the Muslims did to them when they conquered Egypt. All the Coptic, you know, the patriarchs, all the Coptic, you know, priests who are there, they were given back their seats by the Muslims. They were given back their seats in the church. So it's up to you to do your research. So the conditions reflect the mentality of the victorious and cultivate the seeds of social and moral isolation of the Christian minority in the Muslim community and reflect the extreme and strange insults of Christians and contradict completely with the spirit of the Holy Quran and the, bio and the biography of the Prophet and the biography of the writer's caliphs who frequently urged for the mercy and the dignity of the people of the book. They also contradict with the rule established by the Pact of Omar which, which states they bear what we do and we bear what they do which was mentioned by the many pacts between the Prophet and the Christians of Najran and the Jews as well as the history of the Muslim caliphs after him. A good scholar would mention, would mention that. He'll put the Prophet as, as number one. Even Nadira uh, Ahmed has shown in his discussion, he, he, he demonstrated that the Prophet's words are, are supposed to be followed. And any land Muslim knows that. Then after him, now we will have to see if, if this goes to the teachings of the Prophet or their lies imposed on him. Like what 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 is here allies allies imposed on Sayyidina Omar Sayyidina Omar of whom the prophet eh, prophesized about him being the caliph after him. The prophet mentioned in a in a hadith if Omar was bad was bad, would the prophet tell us to to follow him and Abu Bakr? As it is in the hadith, Iqtadu billadhina min ba'di Abu Bakr wa Omar, hadith mentioned by scholars, like, like Ibn, uh, uh, it's a hadith mentioned by scholars, uh, like Imam, uh, like Ib Ibn Abil Riz al-Hanafi, when, when he was co commenting on the, on the book by Imam al-Tahawi, and the book is called uh, Al-Aqid al-Tahawiya. Yeah, just find uh, Al-Aqid al-Tahawiya, and you and you you will find these words there, which are hadith, which is a hadith of the Prophet والسلام, telling the people min ba'di Abu Bakr wa Umar, follow those who are who are after me Abu Bakr and Umar. The Prophet didn't know if if they will, they would be be harsh to people like the Christians. It's a well known fact uh, how the Prophet treated the, these two. Will the Prophet provide us with, with people who will torture? The Prophet Tarakna ala mahajjatil bayda he put us you, you know these things which were he put us the Prophet on a place which was white. Leiluha kanahariha its night is like day this place which is the straight path. This path or this place which we were put, none deviates from it except they, they ignore it. So the Prophet didn't know that Omar would, would, would come and touch. As it, it is known in history, the way he loved to say, he said, now Omar, he didn't know. The Prophet knew what would, how would happen after him. He didn't know that Omar would later do, do, do this and this. Come on, read the books and know what the Prophet did, like appointing caliphs after him, that he did it based on a revelation, and it was for the benefit of us. The Prophet didn't know what uh, Omar would do, or if Omar did this, how come the, the, the other Sahabas, so, 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 Uthman and Ali kept quiet? Say, 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 Ali, for, for example, in a, in a hadith of him and a Jew. Huh? The way 
you, you, you know, it was a business transaction, it was a long story, but it shows until later that, that the Jew became a Muslim. Yeah, this, you know, they were brought up by the Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, and their character made people to enter Islam. Yeah. Sayyidina Ali treated Sayyidina Ali and the, and the Jew the way they went until the Jew became a Muslim. So, if anyone after the Holy Prophet did something bad, we should not attribute it to, to, to Islam. We attribute it to the Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam since he was the Mufasir of the Holy Quran. He's the one who taught us this religion. Aisha asked him, Aisha was asked what was his character. She said his character was the Quran. Quran. Follow the Holy Prophet. He's the one who taught us the Quran who taught us Islam, so that to, to, to understand Islam. See the Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, and you will understand the Qur Qur'an. And by understanding Qur'an, you will understand the spirit of Islam. Let me, let me end. So many of these conditions are opposed to the opinions of the principles of jurisprudence and the views of the Imams, such as the issue of the denial of the teachings of the Prophet regarding treating the people of the book and changing their dress code. Some of these conditions are completely incompatible with the principle of preaching for Islam, which is rooted in the philosophy of Islam, claiming that Christians stipulated that they will not uh, read the Quran, as I've just uh, mentioned, and I mentioned it in detail now, which is the key to the guidance in Islam. This strange condition brings the basis of conditions to an end, and it and decreases its weakness, meaning the weakness of, the, of this pact of Omar, it is weak based on this, and also based that the people of the, of the book would change their dress code. So, ch changing their dress code, not reading the Quran, scholars have critically looked at this na narration with what Islam really teaches. And I've thrown this na narration away. Yeah, any narration which, which goes against the spirit of Islam, it is a thrown away. Islam, Islam is a, is a re, re, religion which sees any text crit, critically and measures it with, with, with what Islam came to teach, what the sh sh Sharia of, of Islam came to teach, and then measures it if it goes really with what Islam teaches. As you, you know, we are not like the Christians, not to criticize them, but the Christian will just take any, any, anything and make it eh, our, our word of God. Just go to the Gospels. They are, they are no, no, no anonymous, but they were just picked, you know. The, these ones are the words of God. In Islam, we don't have anything like that. So I think, insha'Allah, وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ To us, it is just delivering, and God will do the rest. إِنَّكَ لَا تَحْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَهْبَبْتَ You cannot guide of whom you like. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَى But Allah guides whom He wants. Whom He wants, who, who wants to be guided, Allah will guide, guide, guide Him. All this is mentioned in the Holy Quran, the last book of Revelation, the last testament, the book of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, This is the book of which there is no doubt in it. Huh? And this is the book which the, the, there is no any contradiction. Quran chapter 4 verse 82 and we, we, with this few st statements of mine in case I have mentioned anything which is wrong feel free to contact me as I always say you have my contacts in, the, in some of the videos you can meet me in the mosque lib library which is Salam or on the street and correct me 
and I had said something about the wives of the Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam. So inshallah in my next video I shall try to see if my statement was right. All this I mentioned in my previous video. Wabiyada salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you wa jazakallahumma khair. Let me respond to the call. Ma'asalam. I'm using my phone to record. Bye.